Okay, we're going to take a look at integration by parts. This gives us another method for evaluating integrals that might be a little bit more complicated. Okay, so here's just a, a quick look at where the formula for integration by parts comes from. If we start with the product rule, the derivative of some function u times some function v is the derivative of u times v plus u times the derivative of v. And if we look at this in terms of differentials, we can get rid of the dx right there. And we can rearrange. So we switch the v and the du around, and we subtracted it to the other side of the equation. Switch that whole equation around. And if we take the antiderivative, we have subtraction within that integral on the right-hand side, so we can take the integral of each of them separately. And that first one there is the integral of the derivative of u times v, which is just u times v. And this right here is our integration by parts formula. Okay, so we're taking the integral of something that's in the form of u dv, which means it's a product of two functions. We'll call one of those functions u and the other one dv. dv is typically going to be some function that can be integrated directly. Uh, one of the just reversals of one of our derivative rules that we already know. Okay, and we have an acronym here that helps us to choose which function to call u. Uh, it's LIPIT, which stands for logs inverse trig polynomial exponential trig. So you look at the product within your integral and you identify the function that comes first. If you have a logarithm, that's u. If there's no logarithm, but you have an inverse trig function, then that would be u and so on. Okay, so we have the integral of x cosine of x dx. If we go through Lippet, there's no logs, there's no inverse trig, but there is a polynomial. x is just a polynomial of degree one. So u equals x, that means that dv is cosine x dx. The derivative of u would be the derivative of x, so du equals dx. And if we take the antiderivative of dv, we get v equals sine of x. And we can plug all of this into that integration by parts formula. Integral of u dv equals u times v minus integral v du. So we replace all those pieces. And we know the integral of sine is negative cosine, so this ends up being x sine of x plus cosine of x plus c. All right, if we go through Lippet here, uh, there are no logs, no inverse trig, but x squared is a polynomial, so u equals x squared, dv is e to the x dx, and we can find du and v, and plug those into our formula. But we should notice here, once we simplify things down a little bit, we can pull out that constant too. This integral of x e to the x is still not one that we can evaluate directly, so we need to go through integration by parts again. So we establish u for this one, that'd be x. We have dv, du, and v. So x squared e to the x, we've already taken that antiderivative, that just kind of follows along minus 2 times, and here we have our uv minus integral v du. Distribute the negative 2, take the antiderivative of e to the x, and don't forget your plus c. So we can use integration by parts as many times as we need to until we get ourselves uh, to a point where we can evaluate the integral directly. Okay, if we go through Lippet here, no logs, no inverse trig, no polynomials, but we have an exponential e to the x. So take the derivative, take the antiderivative, plug them into our formula, uv minus integral v du. And you might be wondering right now if this is really going to get us anywhere, because we know that as we take derivatives of sine and cosine, we just keep going around in circles, coming back to where we started. But let's just persevere here a little bit and see what happens. So you, we'll do uh, integration by parts again. u equals e to the x. Now dv is sine of x. And plug that into our integration by parts formula, being really careful with negatives here. So we're subtracting the entire integral, so I use parentheses there. My antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. 
So when I simplify this down, we have to be really careful that we treat all of our negatives correctly. And what we notice now is the thing we started with was the integral of e to the x cosine of x dx. And the integral left over down below is integral of e to the x cosine of x dx. It's the same thing that we started with. So if we actually write this out showing where we started and where we're at, we can rearrange. We can add the integral of e to the x cosine of x dx over to the left-hand side. And since we have two of them, it's just two times the integral of e to the x cosine of x. And then we can divide by two. And we've found that the integral of e to the x cosine of x dx equals e to the x sine x plus e to the x cosine of x divided by two plus c. So this is a special method of using the integration by parts formula known as solving for the unknown integral. So if you have something like an exponential and a trig function where you know you can keep taking those derivatives and you just kind of keep going around and around and around, if you ever end up where you have the integral that you started with in your, in your solution, you can move it over to the left-hand side and then divide by a constant.